So um, I'm Javid Thomas, um, co-founder of Race Equality Matters, along with the fantastic Raj Tulsiani, um, CEO of Green Park, who you may have seen at other events. I'm also co-founder of The Collaboratory, which creates collaborations to tackle societal issues that matter the most, and race being a key one at the moment. We're also today joined by um, our project manager, Donna Robertson, uh, and we have Emily and Claire running the events today in, in, in the background. So big thank you to all of them. Um, Race Quality Matters is a not-for-profit, and it aims to be a catalyst to move organizations and individuals from conversations to meaningful action as impact. Impact is really important for everything we do. Today's event is all about that and theme tea break one year on from its launch. Um, so some of you may have come there, there uh, and we'll explain a bit more about that. Today's session will be fast paced and interactive. There'll be polls. Donna will take you through the 11 steps in three, in, in three or four uh, groupings of how to do it right guide, um, which includes why the specific steps in the guide were identified and important to get it right. There will be collaborative discussion groups, uh, at least two, and top tips shared. We'll also introduce you to what we're calling two amazing trailblazers, Sharon Salmon and Sonia Hazen from Network Rail and its Cultural Fusion Network, uh, whom were the architects of the tea break. Uh, and co-collaborators co in creating this guide, um, the How to Do It Right guide. We also had Mental Health First Aid England support. So massive thank you to them for the help um, and being at the very beginning. And finally, if we have time, we will squeeze a few Q&As at the end, which we'll take in the chat, but we'll, we'll see what happens uh, time-wise. Um, next slide, please. As you know, we co-create concepts and solutions in collaboration with those with lived experience of race inequality. So this is to remove the barriers or challenges to get it, getting it right in organizations. Um, and it's to get the change we want to see or indeed feel. So you'll see a number of their race quality week, which number I, I know many of you were involved in, safe space, um, um, the big promise, uh, tea break, which is why we're here today. And my name is, um, Race Equality Week is always the first Monday in February every year, so you can have that for your diary for the next 100,000 years. Um, so no excuses to miss that date. Um, and again, you'll get links to these events um, um, or, um, or you can go on our website to access workshops for these and the, the resources on that side. So thank you. Next slide, please. So uh, T-Beck is what, why we're here today. Um, I think it's um, in, important that um, um you know we, we also need to mention all this is created because of the support of um our, our key partners so if we can have the next slide please so um the bt um and green park absolutely um, visionary and founding partners auto trader data market association edelman and hs2 and other key ones including network rail cultural fusion um, and, and and there's more their support and this is really important means you can access the resources for free we do want there to be barriers for wonderful people like yourselves to be able to implement these solutions because we know how it can be a challenge to get access to budget but we are a not-for-profit you know and we're very keen and do need further funding to keep this going free and not have to charge people so if you want to your organization to get engaged make a donation or have some marketing opportunities then please do get in touch um next slide we'll be recording the event so you can access it along later with the slide so again i know some of you want to take it back to your your, your race networks etc or your dni teams um, if you have any questions along the way um please do put them in the chat and we'll try to respond to them your sound will be auto disabled until the discussion groups when you can um chat uh, more about that later Please do feel free to tweet and post social media content um, during or after the event. You'll see our handles on the right. Your support and amplification of this means this movement will grow and we'll get more organisation engaged. I understand, you know, um, over 500 organisations organization have registered for today's event. I think when we, the last event we did was between 150 and 200. So it just shows the need for this is, is growing. So it's fantastic. And more still coming through the door. So uh, without further ado, if we can go on to our first poll, if you could just answer the um, questions um, and then we'll, we'll share some of the key results with you. In the room today, 48% um, uh, well, um, identify as ethnic minority uh, and 49% uh, identify as an ally. So, you know, a mix. And it's really important. This is, you know, everyone's, um, you know, has a part to play. Have you downloaded the tea break book yet? So hopefully you can see this. Um, so not yet 84%, you do need to download it. Um, so 13%, so you get the gold stars, um, those that have. Uh, but I so said, we, we, and we'll, we'll go through the, um, the, the workbook uh, and 
send you the link later as well if you haven't had access to that but it is direct on our website have you been to three break workshop before so 88 percent no um so you, you know a, a brand new audience here uh, which is fantastic how well do you think your organization tackling race inequality so um you know fairly really well really well 35 percent a little not enough or not at all is 65 percent. so roughly two-thirds you know little or less and i think you know we're, i'd suggest we're 18 months on from when all organizations said we'll do more um so that, that, that's, that's a bit disappointing um um but not surprised should i say uh have you noticed much change in your organizations again a uh, fair amount 31 and a great deal um uh seven percent so that's 38 percent which is positive so yeah but at least we know some organizations are making progress uh and it's important we keep this momentum going do you feel your leaders are committed to tackling race inequality and i think that's quite a consistent score of about 60 percent, and that's positive i think you know about 18 months ago that was a lot lower i think it was around 20 percent so there is definitely something happening in our organizations um to make um on the side but a really interesting question is do you think your leaders are comfortable in talking about race um, so only 32% comfortable or very comfortable. And again, I think that says a lot. And it's it's a lot easier to maybe focus on topics we're more comfortable with than those that we're not. And I think tea break, and that's why tea break was co-created, and, and Sonia and Sean will share how it helps people have these uncomfortable conversations, but in a good way, positive way. Okay, so thank you all for that. So for subserving that. Um, so what is tea break? Um, to put it simply, um, it's an organization-wide theme discussion, not just for the race networks, this is for the whole organization, um, to encourage, uh, enables courageous conversations uh, so you can hear the honest voices and feelings of your colleagues. It, it's current and gets a live pulse. You don't have to wait for the annual staff review. It's ongoing. It was created in collaboration with Network Rail, as mentioned, and their Cultural Fusion Race Network. Um, before we hear from Sharon and Sonia, um, we're going to just show a quick video to explain a bit more about Tea Break. If we can play the video, thank you. The Tea Break provides the framework and opportunity for an organisation to hear the honest voice and feelings of its colleagues about race inequality. All employees are invited to join a one hour themed online discussion about an issue that matters. Individuals can remain anonymous, listen to others or actively participate. It's freedom of choice. Benefits of the Tea Break include fosters inclusion, supports well-being, highlights issues for action, removes the barriers and the fear of talking about race, normalises conversations on race and builds understanding of the issues. You can also join the Race Equality Matters Tea Break community. We've set up a peer support network on Guild. Guild is a community app for professionals. It provides private, secure spaces for collaborative discussion. Guild is already helping over 20,000 people have conversations that matter. We also have a tea break guide, co-created by those with lived experiences of race inequality. This guide consists of four phases and 11 steps. This guide outlines the practical steps you can follow to set up and run a tea break.
Thank you. And you can access um, the video to, if, it, if it helpful to show through to people. As you can see, so we launched this um, with um, uh, Sonia and Sharon last year um, and over 500 um, downloads from 437 different organizations. Now, these organizations have a reach of about 1.9 million employees. So you can imagine the reach it's having. And 78 percent of participants um, um, believe tea break will help tackle race inequality so i think it's definitely worth looking at it's important so the, 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 if you haven't done it already download the, load the guide you'll notice um it's, it's we call it how to do it right guide and it's a guide so use it as you see fit so adapt it for your organization it's aimed at the project lead or the facilitators for it which we'll explain more um also um we um encourage you to um there's 11 you'll notice there's 11 steps which is a bit of a random number but when we built this we identified there had to be 11 steps to get it right um so um if we there are two mandate it's a guide but there are two mandatory elements so one is you need a facilitator for, for it and sonia and sharon explain that and then also important that we keep our colleagues safe especially when we have um, uncomfortable and at times emotional discussions for various topics uh they're the only mandatory things and that's why you get it right if you do these two two key things so as I mentioned, the guys there to support you. Next slide, please. So um, as you can see, so uh, this um, this wonderful um, person, um, Louise from Oxford County Council, downloaded the guide and ran her first uh, tea break within three weeks. And she says, having the guide gave me the confidence to do it. So that's three weeks. So I'm going to suggest there's no excuses. Uh, and she had more people engaged than before. In the guide, there's some key things. You know, we, we talk about why each step and key points to the step. There's checklists. To, so to help you help you cover and there are some hi green highlights to um, things to consider so consider using polls and, and things like that so you know this has been built with a number of things to to help give you a reference point um but as i said use it as you see fit um next slide please um so um that's what it looks like and next slide um interesting a lot of projects fail um because we fail to uh, get, get change to happen so this is um by um um uh, dr john cota of harvard uh renowned for these eight steps to make change happen and if you don't do these eight steps change doesn't happen in your organization so if you think about the projects that have succeeded look at them eight and if those have failed again look at them eight so in the guide we've got more information on each of these steps so it could be quite useful for you to think including i think a really important quick wins don't make these projects last for you know it's got a three-year project get get it going you know keep implementing it and build on the gains uh, next slide. Um, before we go on to uh, the guide, I'm going to um, introduce um, Sharon, um, Salmon and Sonia Hazel from Network Rail. Please unmute yourself. Um, thank you. Um, for those that don't know, Network Rail owns and operates and develops Britain's railway infrastructure, it includes 20,000 miles of track. So that saves a lot of car journeys. 30,000 structures, including bridges, tunnels and viaducts and thousands of signals, level crossings and stations. Sharon is a supplier manager at a Southern region based in London. And under her leadership as chair of the Culture Fusion Network, the team was awarded with the Star Axe Awards for Teamwork is Key. 
with particular at attention and recognition given to the tea break concept and its successful application. Sonia is an assurance and controls manager and is part of the senior leadership team. Sonia has been an advocate for DNI for cultural fusion. In 2021, Sonia was nominated for both a Woman in Rail Award and the Investing in Ethnicity Workplace Hero Award. Award. Sorry. So a very warm welcome to two very, very special guests. So um, if we take down the slides, thank you. Sonia, um, as you may recall, um, it was April last, um, last year, um, a year since we um, launched the tea break and we um, started collaborating in March last year. But many people at this event will be hearing about it for the first time, as you would have seen. Can you share why did um, you implement it and how has it evolved? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, David. So as a race and ethnicity staff network, uh, we actually thought about at the beginning of lockdown, how we were going to talk to our members and how we were going to reach out to them. So the scope is very much around COVID and ethnic minorities and also educating the, our allies. And we wanted to give our members an outlet to discuss their feelings and topics to include things like coping mechanisms and grief and, and keep an eye on mental health. We really thought about how we could reach out to our members during that time and show support and understand the various nuances that we were going through. We thought about how we could increase engagement from our members during that particular time. And we thought about actually, are we meeting our brief? Are we still embracing our cultures and influencing our colleagues? Um, how we evolved, so we initially we started around April uh, 2020 it would have been and when we launched in the May we asked our network members to vote on what we were going to talk about and what we were going to discuss and we did that probably for the first month before we thought about how we were going to actually prepare and invest in each week and it's gone on from strength to strength. So in evolving, you know, if we don't put something out there, our members are coming to us and saying, uh, what's the topic next week? Or we haven't got a tea break in the calendar, what's happening? So definite evolution has happened and uh, there's still a presence within the, the network. I think uh, from, from our point of view, what network rail and cultural fusion, it, it's part of the DNA of the organization now. It's not a pop-up thing. It, it, it's, and as I said, if it's not done, people are saying, <laughs> what are we doing? Um, so I think that's a, a really good way to show the impact it's had on, on colleagues. Um, Sharon, what would you say has been the biggest impact of um, tea break at network rail? Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Javid, um, for getting the opportunity to come along today and talk about tea break. So I guess the biggest impact of the tea break has been its consistency. And as Sonia said, you know, we started from a very small space and it's become a larger, larger, larger entity now where we've created a well-being safe space for our members to come and talk about the issues that are affecting them. So they usually around ethnicity topics um, where they can talk about these things and feel valued in, the, in, in their workplace and really create a, you know, be a part of creating a positive environment in, in where they work. So we're really proud that we are now seeing the fruits of our labor and that we're getting more and more people joining the tea breaks and, and willing to talk about it and feel that it's actually a safe space for them to contribute their experiences and to also attract not only our members, but also other functions, so our HR functions, our senior managers and our exec managers coming along to find out what is happening in the organization. I hear when we spoke to you before that you're, you're, you're hearing from voices of people you wouldn't normally hear from. Absolutely. And whilst we had created the tea break, I was leading the team. I'm now a member. I'm not leading the, the, the network anymore. And I find that I cannot wait for our Wednesday morning um, session so that I can join as a member to participate in the discussion so I can see it from both perspectives and it's been valuable and so useful for, for not only just our members but other parts of the organisation as I mentioned before. Brilliant, thank you. And we'll come back to uh, Sonia Sharon to comment their um, experiences of the various parts of the of, of the guide. So um, what I'll do without further ado is invite, um, introduce you to Donna Robertson uh, who'll take you through the first part of um, the guide. Thank you, Javid, um, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to take you through the 11 steps. Um, it's only a top line walkthrough. Uh, the workbook will take you through each step in a lot more detail, so please do download that. 
we're going to start our journey at step one, phase one. And this is all about making tea breaks safe. So you need to assure the psychological safety and well-being of the participants. Talking about race and equality requires honesty, openness and courage. And participants might feel vulnerable and concerned about negative repercussions in terms of their career and mental health or how they might be judged and or perceived. So we recommend that you create a meaningful psychological safety statement that's signed by senior leaders, as this endorsement will encourage people to be more honest and open. Also give thought to the meeting rules and behavior. So use the Chatham House rules, which means that people can use the information received, but they can't um, <clears throat> use the identity or affiliation of the speakers or any other participants. Um, and we recommend that you don't record tea break unless you have a really good reason to do so. During the session, empower participants to, to call time out if it gets too much and provide support and signpost them to resources. We also advise that you conduct wellbeing checks before, during and after tea break. Um, as it can be very emotional for people sharing their feelings and experiences, but it can also be emotional for those who are hearing the honest views mm. of others as well. So um, it's, that's something to bear in mind too. So if we go on to the next slide. So when you've done that, the next phase is all about finding the right people to champion, drive and deliver uh, the tea breaks. And step two is about identifying your tea break lead. You need someone to spearhead the initiative and support it from start to finish. So find someone that's going to bring energy, focus and continuity to the initiative. Someone with passion, people skills, resourcefulness and persistence. We recommend that you brief them on tea breaks so they've got all the information they need to understand the scope of their role and then get their agreement to be the lead and ask them what support they might need. Um, to deliver that. The next slide. Gaining senior endorsements is important because research has found that uh, it's a driver for success when it comes to diversity and inclusion. Uh, their endorsement and involvement signals to the rest of the organizations that any issues raised um, will be taken seriously. So we recommend that you meet with senior leaders, explain what tea break is, its benefits and why their involvement is critical and highlight their role in establishing the psychological safety of the participants and also explain what they can do to support this initiative um, by engaging with line manage etc so um, if you get their commitment to support employees involvement they will empower colleagues to attend the tea break so um, so you, you'll get more more attendance that way too um, so next slide and then when you've covered step one to three, it's time to create your working group. Um, they're going to run the initiative from start to finish. So from identifying themes to promoting the tea break events, right through to running and evaluating them. As tea break is a pan organization initiative, we reckon, recommend that you create a diverse group with a broad range of skills and choose an effective chairperson. I'm just going to hand back over to Javid now. Sorry, um, before we go to the next phase of steps, uh, and then there's a chance to collaborate amongst yourselves, um, which we'll explain more about. Uh, just wanna go back to Son Sonia and Sharon. So Sonia first, um, as highlighted by Donna, looking after people's safety is integral to the tea break, and it's a big part in the guide. Um, how do you do that? Safety at Network Rail is a big thing anyway, without you know, without a doubt, it's one of our core th themes. Um, and it was no different within our network. So for us, it was about setting the scene early on, encouraging people to be aware that it's a safe space, encouraging people that they could talk about the things and they wouldn't be judged, and that everybody's opinions, thoughts were valid. Um, we often had emotional times, you know, where there'd be tears and people's shared experiences were not just thought provoking, but shocking to some people. And what we always made sure we did was follow up with those people. We offered people the opportunity to reach out afterwards and we signposted to various organisations that we link with, like Mental Health First Aid, Samaritans. Um, I'm also a mental health first aider. 
and the Samaritans volunteers, so I felt very comfortable and at ease uh, making sure that I supported colleagues afterwards and making sure that they got the right support. But Network Rail has uh, an employee assistance uh, programme too, so we'd always make sure we signpost the colleagues to those as well. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and Sharon, um, Donna also covered the importance of finding the right people, absolutely crucial and it's not one person's role i think that came across clear so how did you engage the right people to support you uh, to deliver tea break and what were their respective roles um so obviously we identified massively the need that you know during covid times we needed to reach out and make sure that our members and colleagues were okay but we had the framework of the network um which to do so um so you need dedicated individuals that sees the vision and, you know, you talk through how, what, what we wanted. I mean, at the time, we didn't realise it would become such, such, such a, a, a um, massive resource for our, for our members. But, you know, you need to, you know, make sure that, um, that it's facilitated well and that the topics are, you know, topics that people feel comfortable talking about. Sometimes, as um, Sonia said, that they can get very, very emotional. So we found that if we had a co-host to help support each other was, you know, a great way to um, get the right people involved in, in, in the tea break. And it's also a good way to manage the chats. I know we've got chats going on at the moment. So whilst people were sharing their experiences, other people feel more comfortable maybe just talking in the chat rather than putting their camera on and talking about their personal experience. So if you've got someone else managing that as well, then people feel welcome and people feel that they are being listened to, even though they may not be speaking about it, but they may be sharing their experiences in, in the chat. So I guess have a framework, dedicated individuals, as Donna has already explained, to make sure that you be consistent and have facilitators to help run, run the tea breaks. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and I think that's absolutely, as, as I said, important emphasis on it's not one person's role and it's everyone has a part to play and support each other. So it's, it's a t t team effort and that's why it's been successful. Actually, um, what we want to do actually now is give you an opportunity to collaborate amongst yourselves and share ideas in the discussion group. Um, I know some have been asking about what themes can we do in the talk about, but that'll be another collaboration we'll do later on in today's event. But for now, I think what's really important is how will you go about engaging the right people? So you're going to go into little groups of about eight people um, and whether for this project or other projects, how do you get the right people around the table to be, be part of this, this, this little group? So what I'm going to do is hand you back to Donna. Ult, uh, Start at step five. Thank you. Um, so at step five, we're ready to prepare and go live. And this step is all about shaping the structure. So one of the biggest benefits of Tea Break is that it enables regular and consistent discussion of race and equality issues. And the frequency and format is going to depend on your organisation. We recommend that you liaise with colleagues when you're scheduling to ensure that everyone's got a good opportunity to attend and also that you schedule it as part of the working day to encourage attendance and reinforce your organization's commitment to race equality and also that you use a variety of format formats to keep your tea break fresh and interesting so for example you might want to invite a speaker you might want to showcase a video have a panel um, or start with two hosts talking about a chosen theme. So next slide. So now you've determined the frequency and format of the tea break. Step six is when we start to identify themes. Um, as mentioned, each tea break focuses on a particular theme and we do this because it provides focus for your discussion, discussion and enables deeper, more meaningful conversations. So what we recommend is that you look inside the organisation for themes, for example, brainstorm ideas with colleagues, analyse staff survey findings or run polls with colleagues, but also look outside the organisation as well. So monitor the media or focus on key D&I dates such as Black History Month or Race Equality Week. Keep a note of the themes that have been discussed and which one's been the most popular, as this will help you plan future tea breaks. So back to you, Javid, now. Great. Thank you, Donna. And um, 
we know um, themes and topics was such a big issue. So um, if we can just go back to Sonia, um, Donna mentioned the frequency of the tea break um, sessions uh, depend on the organization. So I think you mentioned you do yours weekly. Um, how, and how long are your sessions for and why do you do weekly? So initially, uh, it was only going to be for a month, but as COVID has um, propelled us and it's been really successful, we've con continued. So it is weekly. Um, in the last uh, maybe two months, as we've got a new network um, leadership team, we've reduced it down to three weeks out of four, uh, just because we, there is a Wellbeing Wednesday within Network Rail, and we don't want to clash. And it also gives the leadership team some time to look after their wellbeing as well. Um, we initially started at only doing it for 30 minutes, but we always overran because people only started to find their voices maybe 15 to 20 minutes in and we needed to give them space. So it's always an hour. Um, we typically start three or four minutes in. So, you know, give people time to join the call, etc. And it runs for an hour really successfully. Great, thank you. Thank you. And just picking up on what Donna said about getting your shown a little video or getting someone to talk a bit. That's just to set the scene about the theme and then for everyone to open up the discussion. So we won't be just speakers talking all the time. It, it, it's to sort of spark the discussions. Sharon, can I, um, we touch upon, you touched upon slightly, um, how do you decide which themes you'll cover? But I guess which ones have been the most popular for um, Network Rail? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the pop the popular ones obviously was obviously around the terrible death of George Floyd. Um, we saw massive, um, you know, uptake of people wanting to participate and um, in and join the conversation, and to help support each other through a terrible time that happened. Um, we found also that mental health and racial inequality was also a very popular topic, um, which you know our members wanted to discuss. Mm. And we also were looking at coping with breaking Asian stereotypes, which is also another topic which was really, really um, popular. And really looking at sort of cultural stigmas and, and, and looking at also educational piece um, around religion and celebrating different cultures. So it can take on um, a discussion format um, or it can take on a presentation format where it's an education where we're wanting to learn about something that we don't know about before. So raising that awareness. So it can take on um, different formats, but those were by far the most popular ones to name but a few. Brilliant, thank you. And what we're gonna give them an opportunity is um, we're gonna give you a chance to do a mass collaboration in the chat. So if you go in the chat, I'm just going to give everyone 30 seconds just to write in the chat potential themes and ideas you think could be good or of interest in the discussion. What we'll do is we'll capture all these and then share them with everyone at the end. So, you know, in a nutshell, we'll have hopefully you know, 100 plus ideas of themes that, you know, you can just choose as a menu. So if we can all go in the chat, I'll give you 30 seconds for that. That'd be fantastic. So cultural stigmas, career progression, allyship, uh, Black fatigue, uh, hair, career development, microaggressions, allies come up again, Asian history, terminology, staff safety, uh, gaslighting, intersectionalities. Yep, representation terminology. So I think I think we, this is coming through brilliant. So I think we've got three years worth of um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, themes to do. But again, we'll set, share these with everyone at the end and you can use them or share them with your colleagues to, to vote in your organization, which ones would be most popular. Um, and I think from here, you might see there are some similar ones. Allies came up a few times. Um, so again, um, you know, they may, that might help you understand which ones are most cop, uh, common, uh, you know, recruitment unconscious bias, which is brilliant. So thank you for that. Um, so now I'm gonna go back to um, Donna for the next uh, phase. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Javid. So we're now at the start of phase three and step seven, which is all about promotion. Um, you'll need to let colleagues know about your tea break and encourage them to attend. So think about the information they'll need to know when deciding to attend and safety is one of them. Use a range of internal channels to ensure the majority of colleagues have an opportunity to see and digest the information. And also think about ongoing communications to in in ensure colleagues are aware of which tea breaks are coming up and when and what has happened as the result of tea break discussions if there are follow-up actions. Next slide, thank you. 
And I think, you know, if we've heard that, you know, from, from Sonia and Sharon that people attended and spoke that they hadn't heard from before. And I think we hear that quite consistently. Um, Valerie uh, was, uh, who was one of our trailblazers for tea break, Valerie Simpson uh, mentioned that, you know, that they have, they have people within their organization that are involved in dialogue they wouldn't have been involved in before. So do think broadly in terms of your communications. Next slide. So step eight is all about preparation. So you get the most, so you get the most from your tea break session. So to ensure it runs smoothly, there are a few things to prepare and think about in advance. Um, Javid mentioned that one of the key things that you need, a requirement, is finding the right, is having a facilitator. So you need to find the right facilitator. You need someone who can manage behavior and main focus, maintain focus on the chosen theme. They must ensure the tea break is constructive, safe and fair, and also appoint a chat manager to monitor the chat, answer questions, show in the moment appreciation and support the facilitator. Um, prepare questions in advance, materials and run a technical test in advance as well. Um, and um, next slide, we're now on to step nine, which is the point of what that you're running your tea break. During the session, set the tone, put participants at ease and set ground rules. Deal with questions as they arise or as soon as possible afterwards. And also remind participants of available support. And you'll find some organizations listed in the guide to, to help you with this. So next slide, step 10 of the journey, you've run your first tea break <laughs> and it's been a, an amazing success and now there are some post event essentials so after the tea break it's essential to follow up with colleagues ensure action is taken where relevant and assess what went well and what needs improvement for next time the first priority is to support well colleagues well-being so do remind them again of the support that's available to them and you may also want to check in personally with some people um, and if the organization takes action as a consequence of tea break discussions share that information with colleagues so that they can see the impact and then review the tea break with colleagues, have a debrief um, to capture best practice, what went well and lessons learned as that will help you evolve it um, and, uh, and, and grow it for next time. So at step 11, we're, we're at the end of the journey and it's time to monitor progress. It's important to understand the overall impact the initiative is having on colleagues and the organization as a whole, as this enables continuous improvement and provides evidence of progress. So review the tea breaks to identify trends, understand what works well, what needs improvements and where the organization has again committed to take action, keep track of that. Um, and then survey people to see what impact that tea break is having on them. And then Next slide, do share your experiences with us. We're always on the lookout for amazing trailblazers like Sonia Sharon and, and Carol Alderfield from Amy here is featured. Um, it, it does make a difference. Um, as Carol says, you know, if this has existed previously, the many organizations would have made significantly more progress in their efforts to tackle race inequality. So, and we wanna hear all about that. So I'm going to thank you very much. That's me done. As I said, um, there is a lot more detail in the workbook to support you. So please do download it. And I'll hand over to Javid now. Um, back to um, Sharon and Sonia to sort of answer a few questions relevant to that section. Um, Sonia, um, Donna mentioned about promotion is key to let, let as many people know about uh, your tea break uh, within Network Rail. How do you go about promoting it? So all our members get an, an invite for the actual tea break uh, sent out by calendar. And we're very open to non-members attending the session because I think it's really important. And we use uh, Network Rail, we have Yammer, which is sort of internal Facebook type thing. 
uh, we promote that onto the page, onto a cultural fusion page, 15 minutes before the tea break starts with a reminder of the topic uh, and the time and, you know, any key themes that we're talking about and discussing. In that, we also remind people that it's a safe space. Uh, and we share that to other pages like uh, Central DNI team, that sort of scenario. So, uh, so it's reaching in other sort of areas across the business. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Sharon, we said there's two must haves for tea break. One is a safe environment for your um, or keeping your colleagues safe, and the other is the facilitator. What advice would you give someone facilitating tea break for the first time? Because we can appreciate how, I don't know, nervous or uh, or concerned or um mindful they they might be um so top tips to me would be great thank you no thank you david yeah i guess um one of the things and, and it was in one of the breakout rooms that came up is um you know set set the scene maybe start it half an hour um and see how it goes but if you're doing it for the first time don't put too much expectation on yourself because it's you're in a, the environment doing something for the first time. So gauge it and see. Um, you have to be a really good listener. So listen to what's being said so that you can gauge the conversation. And obviously, Don has already alluded to watching certain behaviors and maybe, you know, setting the scene that respects people's, um, you know, opinions and, and being respectful all the time. I mean, that's just you know human human good human behavior obviously and have maybe some pre-prepared questions and some allies in 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 the group so that if the audience or the attendees are a bit quiet you've got someone who can just be the icebreaker to get the conversation going and getting people warming up to the to the idea so in a nutshell start don't put too much expectation or uh, pressure on yourself maybe start half an hour listen well um, so that you can gauge the conversation and also um, yeah watch watch behavior so that you can direct that to obviously a more positive environment and have your allies and supporters there in case the, the conversation is quiet so that you can keep the conversation going brilliant thank, thank you for that for that and, and uh, Sonia um, what top tips would you give to someone sort of running tea um, tea break you know so if you went to another organizations or do your, your top tips be? Um, I think for me, it's flexibility. So it's not, I'm not the only person by any means that runs a, a tea break at Network Rail, but flexibility, because you're prepared and you're prepped for what you want to discuss. But sometimes the, the questions or the shared experience organically will shift mm. and that's okay. It doesn't have to be that it's, that you're so rigid that you just focus on that one aspect. Um, and then also allow yourself to, to own the room so you know if it you know not be afraid to say to somebody oh brilliant that's that thank you so much but we need to move on um and and be a good listener listen to what people are saying and I find it easier to reflect back what the person said um and make sure that by saying thank you to whether someone's spoken or someone's talked within the chat um and that helps foster inclusion I find Brilliant, great. Sorry, that answered the question. No, that's great, thank you. And just um, this is thrown out to both of you. One question that was asked: um, How do you um, manage shift work or shift workers? So, this is an area that we are really struggling with, to be honest, because Network Rail we have our Orange Army, our frontline workforce, and depending on what shifts they are, the members can't join. So, we've had some members, and people have loved seeing them walking around on their routes and their in their PPE and stuff, but for some people we just start reaching out and we need to work out how we're gonna do that because it's a really different environment within a signal box, uh, within a maintenance depot and stuff, and we're, and we're not reaching that yet. So it's it's stuff to work on over the next coming year. Okay, brilliant. Um, and I just wanted to add, thank you, Sonia. Um, and as Sonia said, we do get this quite a lot. And if there are any frontline um, people on, on, on on the call right now we have um said that we will be prepared to guide you through doing your tea break so if you need to do your tea break at 10 o'clock at night to accommodate shift workers we will we will accommodate so that you can go off forth and be able to sort of help your other co-workers as well so we have put that out there but um 
yeah, as Sonia said, we're, st we're struggling to get that, that uptake and engagement. Um, I'm aware of some online. organizations that actually they, they, they do have different slots for tea break. Yes. So it might be yeah. 10 o'clock one Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, again, we know people work part time. So maybe Thursday at four o'clock. So you can evolve it and then see, see what happens. It can't be for everyone. We appreciate it. But again, it, 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 it's, it's being flexible, but it's better to do it than not, not, not to do. Um, I, I agree mm. with that. What we're going to do, um, and, and, and I know some people put questions in there. Um, so we're going to go into another collaboration um, group. So if we can go into, um, and again, you have to sort of six or seven minutes. Um, basically, how would you maximize participation from across the organization? It's really important. It's not just a race network involved. It's, it's, it's as many people in, involved as possible. Uh, and that's the beauty about it is the theme or the hot topic. It means more people hear about it. Um, and I call it really, you know, real ac accelerated education. You know, you could hear about hair or cultural um, uh, weddings in the hour, hearing from different people's perspective, and then you can make your own sort of like um, thoughts about it. But it's, it, 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 I think it's f fantastic to do that. So we'll go into the groups. Um, and like last time, if, if people can just um, share tips of how they would go about in their organization so we can learn from each other. Um, if we can drop people in, that'd be great. Thank you. Brilliant, welcome back everyone. Um, thank you. What, we, what we'll do is we'll just allow um, 30 seconds if people just want to um, put their top tips um, to encourage maximum participation across the organization um in, in the chat and again we'll share that later because there's some good ideas that um came in in um, our group etc um and whilst people are doing that i know questions ask about how do you keep it intimate actually tea break is for mass numbers um and we have something called safe space which is for more smaller groups uh, again it's another um solution that we've uh, we, we've co-created so um if you want a small intimate group is that but that's mainly aimed you know, ethnic minority representation with senior leaders the idea of tea break is is, is as many people as possible and in our group was a, a good topic that was brought up was you're talking about ukraine you know how 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 we sit compared to our, our other you know issues and wars etc so um but it helps people understand um on that side so thank you that um so what we got we got um i'm gonna try and do four minutes of q a uh for um sharon and sonia so i've got some coming um back through um um does the facilitator need to be an expert on the topic or the theme that's being picked on it helps if the facilitator knows a little bit about the topic but what you will find is that also in the the attendees there will be someone there that knows a lot and can contribute to that so you don't need to be an absolute expert but you need to be able to facilitate facilitate the conversation well and as we spoke about before be able to listen and also to make sure that the behaviors within the session is respectful and I think that's that 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 is probably the main crux of it. Sonia, yeah. have I missed anything? No, I think that's I think that's exactly right. It's worth mm -hmm. doing a little bit of prep to understand to this and the understand the scope of the session because sometimes people are quiet or reticent in in starting off. So you need to explain and set the scene and not be afraid to give your opinion as well. Yeah. I think um um Echoing a bit what Sharon said, I think facilitators are facilitated and it's to encourage people to speak. So I think it's very important. Um, I'm going to be, you know, the facilitator doesn't dominate the event. Um, it, it, it's just doing and encouraging people and then supporting people and and and, and managing managing that. And again, uh, I think our, our experience with people with mental health first aid training are good facilitators, uh, plus other training we had. And some organisations do bring an external facilitator if if they say, see, see fit. Um, so um, it and I think Sharon or Sonia both said it, it's a good listener, so they can get a sense of the room. And, and so so you d definitely don't have to be an expert at all on the topic because you you, you know. You, it is it, impossible. Um, so I'm just going to see um, another question. We sometimes get uh, the two facilitators prepare beforehand uh, and agree the theme and format. Okay, so that's um, so I was thinking about access, access, accessibility, relevance, frequency, impact, safety. Yeah, rolling facilitators. Do you suggest having rolling facilitators as opposed to just being one person? Yeah, because, um, it's uh, yeah, I would say so because it's a huge responsibility. So you don't want the responsibility to be on the same person each week. So it's good to plan ahead, you know, at least six weeks ahead, topics, um, agreed topics, be flexible and have different people facilitating. Cause not only is it giving um, other people the opportunity to facilitate, but it's also homing in different skills as well. Mm. 
And um, I'm sort of, um, one of the questions is, can a facilitator, I think it's Veronica, be the lead of that network? Um, or, or, or does it have to be the lead of a network? They can be the lead. Sharon certainly facilitated many tea breaks, but they don't have to be the lead of the network. Yeah, and I think someone in one of our groups said it's quite interesting. Yeah, they got a co uh, a co uh, lead, and actually, some, someone is an ally. Uh, you know, to actually get the, the both perspective, and and also it does encourage you know the wider audience attendance um, of of that. And I think that's a, that's a, that's a good good idea. I think it's your partnership and collaboration is really important. Um, so uh, I've seen these support. Trying to get this. Um, do you ever link in with other employee network um, networks like the gender LGBTQ plus etc? I say yes. Yep. Yes, yep. we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're both being too polite, but yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. it's really yeah. important. Intersection intersectionality yeah. is key, really, yeah. and it's great if we can link in and and occasionally link in with other um, companies that we collaborate with and their networks too. Yeah. I think just on that one, actually, there I know there are some small organisations here. Um, now we do know some organisations link up with others, uh, or you might be in a community uh, like Cornwall where there might not be much as much ethnic minority representation, but they link up, and, and you can do it that way. So you know, for, for your region, or how do we incre increase our uh, representation, in our organisation? So there's lots of ways of of kind of, kind of doing it. So, so thank you for that. What we're going to do is. Um, um, coming towards an end but we, we love your feedback on the poll because this this helps us understand what's working today and how we can um um, um in, improve the events etc so if we can just open the poll please so would you recommend the event and it's 95 percent so which is brilliant so a huge thank you to sharon and sonia for making that possible um in comparison to i think this is a, a useful one um other diversity inclusion issues how would you rate tea break um and um it's 97 percent um equally as good if not more effective or sig significantly more effective so 69 percent think it's more effective than most initiatives their organizations are doing so what i'll do is um, if we can just share the um the results now that'd be great so we can see this so that was number two um um how helpful is the promo video good very good to excellent was about um 60 percent uh, and I said, we'll, we'll share that with you. And we do know organizations use it, even if they're sharing it to their leaders to say, look, this is why we want to run tea breaks, et cetera. Um, so uh, how helpful is you from Sharon and Sonia's, you know, from good to excellent, 94%, which is fantastic. Um, thank you. Um, the group discussions, yeah, 32% uh, good, 36% very good, 11% excellent. So well done to all of you contributing that. Uh, and do you think tea break, I think an important question, will help tackle race and quality in an organisation? So um, a catalyst to change, great deal, significant, um, is 67%. So two thirds of us think it will, you know, and, and, you know, it's not the solution on its own, but it does change the dialogue and, and, and it keeps it on the agenda. I think that's very important. And that's why. Um, so um, and then we'll, we'll share some of the other stuff after because I'm conscious of time. We say we'll try and finish by 1.45. So I've got to say a huge thank you to um, Sonia and Sharon. Um, fantastic trailblazers. They've been really you know, giving their time up for this. So, um, yeah, big thank you to that. Um, if we're in a room, you'd have a standing ovation and applause. So just um, I'll have to try and get some like, canned clapping uh, for, for, for another, another another time. Really important to say thank you to our partners and sponsors. You know, and I, I, do, I do say um, I, I don't want to start busking and, and, and singing because I've got a terrible voice. But, you know, if we can have any financial support for this work to keep it for free for inspiring people like you, if your organization want, you know, can be anonymous donations to us or marketing opportunities, you know, we, we'd love to hear from you. So um, and Network Rail um, are, are fantastic supporters for that as well. Um, next slide. So thank you all for joining us. Um, please do talk about this in social media. You'll get some more um, uh, things from us soon. Uh, we'll send you a link to the Guild. Uh, it's, I said it's free and it can keep the conversation going and, you know, people are sharing top tips and themes and ideas and we'll post stuff in there. So it'd be great if we can grow that network, um, etc. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Thanks for all your time. Um, have, have a good um, rest of your lunch break if you're still on it um, and we'll see you soon. Thank you all.